Do pears offer any value for honeybees and other beneficial insects? I'm Rob from Dattle Family Farms, and if you're anything like me, and if you've lived in the South for much of your life, you know that growing apples and peaches and a lot of those fruits in the South is really difficult. However, pears grow abundantly, they're low maintenance, and they produce a whirlwind of fruit in July, August, and September. You can eat the fruit fresh, you can can it, you can preserve it, you can make jams and jellies, and you can also make a good pear sauce out of the fruit. But you might also think of Bradford pears, which people put and they line their driveways with it. They use them as ornamentals in their yards and they bloom really early in the spring in many areas. In a lot of urban areas, uh, you might see a lot more Bradford pears. Around our farm, we see Bradford pears that line the driveways of some of our neighbors' homes. Uh, those are within half a mile of the farm. We also have the standard fruiting pears as well that are growing in people's yards too. I often see honeybees, solitary bees, and a lot of other beneficial insects working pear when it's in bloom. And pear does provide a lot of pollen. However, the nectar on pear, from what I understand, has a lower sugar content and it's not very attractive to bees. We tend to find honeybees working other types of trees much harder than we do pear, but I do see a lot of honeybees gathering pollen from pear trees. If you look online about the value of pears for honeybees, Bradford pear is one of the things that is mentioned the most. And Bradford pear is an early source of high quality pollen for honeybees and other beneficial insects. The problem with that is that it is not one of the earliest sources for us around our farm. It's early March right now and the Bradford pear is really just beginning to bloom in our area. Now, over the last five weeks, we've had red maple blooming, and red maple is a good source of high quality pollen and abundant nectar as well. About three weeks ago, our elm started blooming, and it's a pretty good source of pollen for honeybees too. So for us, uh, Bradford pear does not bloom quite as early as some of the other producers of nectar or pollen. I suspect that the Bradford pears around our farm don't bloom quite as early as they do in many other areas, uh, in large part because we're out in a more rural area. And in cities, a lot of times you have smaller uh, microclimates that might be a little bit warmer a little bit earlier in the year. But I suspect it's also because in cities you don't have large volumes of red maples and also large volumes of elms and other great nectar producing trees. Now on a personal note, I would not plant Bradford pear for honeybees or other beneficial insects in part because where we live, we don't need it. But secondly, uh, Bradford pear, I just don't like how they tend to split once the trees get larger. But most importantly, they will reproduce and produce a lot of wild pears. Now, even though Bradford pears are not one of the most important sources of pollen for us on our farm, the wild pears that are descendants of the Bradford pears are really important. In fact, what you can see behind me are three wild pears that are in bloom. Their white blooms are very obvious when you're driving down the road. In fact, I can drive down the roads in our areas and see the wild pears blooming on the sides of the road. Many people do not like them because some of them have long thorns. They're very invasive and they grow from the seeds of Bradford pears as best as I understand. However, in our area, they begin blooming in early February and they continue blooming. As you can tell, this Bradford pear here is just starting to bloom. And so we can have wild pears that bloom anywhere from the first week in February on into mid or late March sometimes. So they do provide a long standing source of high quality pollen for our honeybees and other beneficial insects. They are very invasive and they're hybrids and they're not na natural to many of the areas where they grow. Even though honeybees do not work pear for nectar, a lot of solitary bees work the wild pears, Bradford pears and fruiting pears much more than honeybees do because they need high quality protein whereas honeybees need a combination of protein and nectar. So I think that's part of the reason why we see a lot more uh, different types of beneficial insects on the Bradford pears and on the wild pears especially. 
I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you have any wild pears growing in your area. Are they a problem for you? I've heard people talk about how they puncture tractor tires and that kind of thing. I haven't had any wild pears puncture my tractor tires, but that doesn't mean a whole lot. Until next time, take care. Have a great day.